the ancient world was not primitive. Their marvels are so advanced, we still use them now. Travel to a world closer than we imagine, an ancient age where nothing was impossible. After Tisibius and Philon, in the first century AD, another ancient genius worked at the library. He was a native of Alexandria, and he taught math, mechanics, pneumatics, and physics. His name was Heron. Could he be an ancient Einstein? Heron certainly had a scientific mind. He was a man of reason. This is what the Greeks are famous for. But they did have religion, and in fact, Heron wasn't averse to making a tidy profit out of it. Ancient Alexandria had hundreds of temples, and they each competed with each other. They wanted to get people in and take their money. So how do you separate yourself from the crowd? The priests always knew that they could rely on Heron to come up with an ingenious idea. He was the one who could think outside the box. Building on the work of Tisibius and especially Philon, Heron invented incredible mechanized models that were at the cutting edge of technology. Priests would demonstrate them in the temples to show their godly powers. An archer magically shooting his arrow at a hissing dragon. A brass horse that appeared to drink water. Dancers revolving around a fire. These were sure signs that the gods were present. So Heron was very much like a modern day stage magician in Las Vegas, achieving what was seemingly impossible. Many inventions seem extraordinary at the time. Television, the electric light bulb. Can you imagine in the 20th century coming across automatic doors for the first time? They were magic. Now, imagine coming across them 2,000 years ago. Surely impossible. But Heron did the impossible. Incredibly, he invented automatic doors over 2,000 years ago. This was one of the most remarkable pieces of technology of ancient times. Amazingly, the world's first automatic doors were on an ancient Greek temple, and they appeared to be opened by the gods. I'm in the temple of Serapis in Ephesus, and this is a massive doorway to this temple. Now, with the door, you also count massive doors. You can see one of the sockets, how it swings open right here. Now, Heron took such a setting like this and did something incredible. Heron realized that if you heat air, it expands. This is a huge development of Tisibius's discovery that air was a substance. And expanding hot air could be used to push water just like the compressed air of the water pump. And it's this that lies behind the magic of the automatic temple doors. Heron's automatic doors are a work of absolute genius. The priest lit a fire. Now, the worshippers couldn't see, but that fire started to heat a tank of water. The water would boil, create steam, which would push through into a second tank, which would force water through a pipe into a bucket. The bucket was attached by a series of ropes and pulleys to the door. So as the bucket filled and fell, the doors would open. The worshippers would be absolutely amazed. They think that the gods themselves have opened the temple doors. They flood in, awe-inspired. The gods have given a sign. This is a moment of epiphany. This is a religious experience. It's so incredible, and you can't quite figure out how it happens. It must be the gods that are responding. It's that kind of innovation that Heron is famous for. He makes the automatic door 2,000 years ago. The ancients didn't just produce power tools capable of tackling the construction of giant monuments. They were ingenious enough to make tools that were capable of even the most delicate surgical operations. And their superb craftsmanship, tools, and technology even extend to something that we take for granted today, the pocket multi-tool. At the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge, England, Archaeologist Marianne Ohata is here to examine the only surviving example of its type, unearthed from a site in the Roman Mediterranean. 
This is an absolutely ingenious tool and it's staggering to think that it's 1800 years old. This would have been cutting edge modern technology for a wealthy traveller to carry. The reason this tool exists today is because it was built to impress from a metal that could survive being buried for almost 2,000 years. It's in fantastic condition because it's made of silver. You might not be able to check into the best hotel or find the best place to eat. You need all the gadgets that you require with you. This gives you a spoon, it gives you a fork, it gives you a knife, it gives you a spike, a tiny spatula. It means that you've got all those really useful, functional items tucked away in your pocket, but when you pull it out, it's made of silver. This is no average utility knife. Almost 1,800 years before its reinvention in the West, the Roman multi-tool was a stunning example of the same craftsmanship that went into creating Roman surgical tools. This solid silver reproduction shows the level of skill they possessed. It did everything a modern multi-tool would do, but some would say better and more elegantly. These tools, these multi-tools that were mass-produced became popular in the 1880s with soldiers as a really functional tool they could keep in their pocket that would enable them to prepare food in the field and also maintain their weapon. The big difference is its Roman predecessor isn't just about function. It's incredibly well-tooled. It's incredibly beautifully engineered. This is also about prestige. It's about eating well when you're on the road. It's about being able to look after yourself. And it's also a little bit about showing off. It just goes to show how ahead of their time the ancient Romans really were. Once again, the ancients created an impossibly modern tool.